everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. It's a gorgeous morning out there. Beautiful. And you woke up to sweeping changes, radical changes coming to the Miss America pageant. I don't know if you saw this this morning, but they are doing away with the swimsuit competition. That was the big announcement. Uh, remember Gretchen Carlson? Was she Miss America back in 19, I believe it was the 80s. Like She's 19, the head 80. of it all now, She's right? She's the head of it all now. She's on the board of trustees. They named her the chair of the organization, and she uh, was the spokesperson this morning saying this. We've heard from so many women who say, we'd like to be part of your program. We don't want to get out there in high heels and a swimsuit. You don't have to do that anymore. Here's her quote. Who doesn't want to be empowered, learn leadership skills, and pay for college? Show the world who you are, the person inside your soul, not mm. on the outside. She continued, that's what they will be judged on now. She was 1989, by the way, Miss America 1989. So she goes on to say, we are now open, we're inclusive, we are transparent. We want to inspire thousands of young people across the country to be part of this program. We want to celebrate your accomplishments and your talents and hand you scholarships, mm -hmm. not your swimsuit oh. body. Okay, so I totally like where it's coming from. I love what she's saying about the intent. So let's talk but swimsuit. I don't really support this. And the competition for just a second. So this is our current Miss Utah. This is Jessie Kate Riley in the green swimsuit. It has changed so much. This is Miss Utah 2016. This is Lauren. When I did pageants back in where there was no electricity. It was a moo-moo. No, you, well, you couldn't wear a bikini, right? You couldn't yeah. wear a bikini. There was a standard Miss America suit and you could pick the color. And it was a one piece and it went, it was from, very appropriate. It went from here to here. And were you ever- And there was no individuality. Were you ever self-conscious with it? Like, no. was this a thought that ever no. would have crushed your mind? No. No, I mean, did, did, isn't Miss America about the platform anyway? Like, why yes. is there a swimsuit competition anyway? That's well, what I really don't. Why did it See, edu education and platform? It when is, Gretchen Carlson, when she was on Miss America education. this morning, yeah. she what was talking about the, the competition. When Gretchen Carlson was asked the same question, what are you about? She says, our focus is really on talent and scholarship. So that's what they want to focus on in the future. Okay, well, but I'm sure a man time. came up with a swimsuit competition anyway. They were like, <laughs> no, but oh, I think he's like, I'm in charge of this. And confidence. we're going to have them come out almost naked. <laughs> and we're going to see which one is the smartest. The hand or a scholarship. And I feel like the swimsuit I like because it's not just about like who's the skinniest. It's about who's healthy. It's about who's confident. I mean, there are other factors outside of so this, like, Lauren Wilson the body. would disagree with you. She says this: taking away the swimsuit this morning. This is her quote: "Is tradition. I've never felt as strong and beautiful and confident as I did walking across the Miss America stage in a swimsuit, knowing I had a healthy lifestyle, knowing I exercised, knowing that I took care of myself physically, mentally, and emotionally." She says, "I believe removing the swimsuit." And by the way, did I say evening gown? No evening gown. Oh either. wow! You get to choose a dress that is all about you and your personality. No more quote evening gown. Um, she says it perpetuates the idea that women need to look, dress, and act a certain way to be taken now seriously. Now I'm just bored. Like I don't even want to tune in now. <laughs> I don't know if I really, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of the last one I watched, but. See, I will say this is the way today is. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. what they had to do. They had to stay relevant. Um, I, I don't think it was a time when I did it back in the 90s. I mean, it was, it was a different time. It has to evolve with what's happening. And this, Gretchen Carlson says, change is happening. It has to change to stay right. relevant. I'd She's much rather will be. wear a wrap dress than a beaded <laughs> up to there. Well, I remember the first year, so I, was, I did Miss Utah in 1993. They just barely swapped beaded gowns for individual, but there were still so many rules and regulations. But I wore velvet, and it was unheard of. And uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you're such it a rebel. Was the the name, name. But she, so Although I've seen you in that time. dress. Wasn't it red? It was red. It was you look beautiful. Now yeah, I'm I love see it. pictures. Yeah, like, you're gonna like have you to bring it. Show it. Show yeah, why are we it's exciting? We, we're skipping over the best part there, getting the chance to be able to see all I, of Nisha's old I photos. Yes, I should have brought those. They're so good. Her hair is like this big. It's awesome. Oh, I know. Her crown. So I, love I am it. trying to think though now that you say were you uncomfortable. I think the swimsuit was definitely the talk of the pageant. How are you gonna look? How are you gonna feel when you walk across? I mean that was the most nerve wracking, I would well, yeah, say. You're well, getting in a swimsuit to, to go to the part of that pageant. public pool is hard. To have someone to, I mean when you're walking across with the judges and the audience, that's hard. Well and back then not as much as now. Now the comparison to everyone and everything that's in front of these girls at all times. Is, does it cause issues? Is it, I mean, is Gretchen Carlson right? Are people not doing the pageant because mm. that's part of it? 
the organization says yes and no more. Yeah. Mm. No, but I, I think don't it's think you'll have totally women drop out of this. I, you know, having hosted a number of these pageants over the last several years, I remember that I did one of the first ones I ever did was in San Pete County. And I remember there was only eight contestants, but a lot of these girls were, had never been in a dress before, right? They'd grown up in a small farming community. And so for them, this was a chance to transform who they were. And it was a huge confidence booster for them. The fact that they got up on stage, wore a dress, did an interview, right. well, et cetera, and What you just said, confidence. I would right. say if I look back however many years ago, that is probably what I took away from it, more than the fact I wore a swimsuit or a gown or anything Is else. that it made you feel confident. It made me feel confident. That's By the good. way, there will now be a live interactive session with the judges. So you get to see these questions, and that's instead of the swimsuit. We'll see what happens next. Uh, the pageant, by the way, coming up in September. Now it's going to make me want to watch it. Now you have to check Now it that out. there's changes. Mm -hmm. All right, so what do you think uh, a trait for men and women is considered really, really sexy? What would you think that they are like, oh, that person's sexy? We're no longer allowed to say swimsuit, so. <laughs> that's true. Um, that's true. I, I think a really contagious smile. I think oh, like, that's good, like, too. That's a good one. Straight eyes. Well, um, according to a new study, it's of nonverbal behavior. It's your voice. It's how sexy your voice is. And what's, what's interesting about the article, they did, um, they did voices. They had men and women listen to each other's voices. And... There were nine traits, including approachability, intelligent, sexiness, and warmth in the voice that they heard that they were like, I think that voice is sexy. So the pitch didn't matter. Okay, so here's the other interesting part about it is what's sexy to you may not be sexy to me. Right. Right, just like you like eyes or you like mm -hmm. or whatever sound you hear is a different sound than I would hear. So if, y if I find some man's voice sexy or woman's voice sexy, you may not find that but whatever you think it is to you it's sexy and what do you like what do i like, like? a deep voice like raspy i don't think i've ever what thought about it i feel like it's a stuff well i kind of hear that like warmth when it's a warm voice you can tell right that, that's what i like i think mm -hmm. an intelligent voice is super attractive but what makes a voice intelligent what makes a voice intelligent yeah, it's more to what me the words well, that are maybe it's saying. more the words that they're saying maybe it's and what makes it sexy Right. I do like a rasp, like I like a little, a little raspy, a little something. <laughs> like they, like they Why are you laughing? Just one or two Why are you laughing that day? Well, I was just trying to envision the type of guy that you're talking about. She's like, yeah, hello. <laughs> Go, she thinks his voice is sexy if he has you? a great body and some tattoos. Right, right. The non-verbal, though. I can, That's hear, really nice. I can hear how much you work out your voice. I can hear it. Right. I got it. Yeah, just lift it a couple of weights on it. No big deal. Where's, yeah. the, where's the gym? Well, it's this funny because I feel like you think that when it's deeper, it's sexy. I mean, Nisha, when she gets sick and she oh. sounds like... Mm -hmm. Super sexy. Like Nate. She's like a phone I'm person. not Nisha. I'm Nate. <laughs> like, I really am. But no, that there's just a, you're, it's so true. There's something about when you hear some voices you turn. Totally. And others should be. And like a rich sounding tone, mm -hmm. too, I think. There's something, not necessarily deep, but just a rich, like, voice. No, I feel like I, it's short-lived, though, because then you need to meet them and find out if you actually if think and they're does the voice not. And add, like to the, add, add up to the, does the voice match mind? the personality. Never well, mind. I really had this the other day. There was a girl I went on a date with who on the phone, it was like, wow, that was, that was a great voice. Really? And, was, oh, and then yeah. when you met her... Well, I would say she was like she wasn't pretty when I met her. But it wasn't the same. Saying, what I'm saying is on the voice that she had on the phone was like it turned watching. my attention. Oh, I feel I was awful like, now. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to I want to meet this girl. You bet. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what's not so sexy. And when you get upset with like a partner, a boyfriend, just someone who matters to you, it could even be like a best friend, and you have to let them know in a text message. Have you ever received one of those texts before that's just like a rant? You get. A bunch. I know you have. Yes, I have. Like and you know what I answer has. is okay. That's Whoa. what you say. If someone yells at me, I go okay. Or okay. yell at me again, I go got it. That's a good one because it would make because it shuts so them mad. down. Well, because I, uh, what are you gonna do when someone keeps yelling at you? Mm -hmm. Okay, you say okay. You go okay. So if you are the person who feels the urge to yell through the text message, don't do that. I have some tips for you about how to craft a text message to let someone know you're upset without losing all of your credibility. Because like Reagan says, she goes, okay, and then forgets about it, right? So number one, give yourself some time to cool off before you ever text them. Sometimes you have to separate yourself from the situation for like 10 to 30 minutes to even a couple of days, depending on like what's going on. Oh, don't, and I like to say we sit on our hands. Don't immediately send that text. No, we, you no. have to sit on your hands and do not respond. Mm -hmm. Just chill in out anger. for a second. Yeah, Read yes, it again and it'll be really emotional if you do that. Okay, number two. 
be clear on what you say uh, when it when you are finally ready to speak. So um, when you put your feelings aside, what is the most important takeaway? So you really have to put the emotions aside and say, okay, at the end of the day, what do I want this person to know? And how can I say that in like two to three sentences? So you have to be able to be concise as well. Um, and then the third part of it, of course, is what to actually text them. So have you if ever, you're mad if or you're if mad. someone's mad at you. No, if you're mad, like you have to, you think about what you're going to say, try to be concise. And then this article says non-reactivity shows you're willing to negotiate. So you don't want to react to anything they did with emotion. So um, you want to clearly show that you're open to conversation. You want to keep your statement rational and diplomatic. Is this all in three sentences? Yes. I've, I've done all that. <laughs> I don't think you can do it in three you sentences. Can't. Well, you have to keep going and going and going. That's my problem is when I make, I'm like, and then I'm explain, then I'm gonna tell you again. But that's why you have to think about it first. Like you have to be careful about how, like what is the takeaway? So don't do all the details of you made me mad when X Y Z happened. Isn't it crazy? We can't just call you. Like, isn't it crazy? I know. That now that's our excuse. Like, we're just going to hop on a text anyway instead of I, it's face hard. to face. Well, I'm uncomfortable with anger anyway. I don't like it. I don't like the way it makes me so feel. So it lets you like passively aggressively go. Does anyone like the way anger makes? No, me I just. It's just. But when you get something like that, I definitely feel uncomfortable. So to, you would have to take a deep breath to be able to answer and it. I kind of like telling people I'm upset with them like through a text because I can be very careful about my words. Well, yeah, then you're not I'm in person, I'm like, get it. But then you don't have to deal with it. You don't have to deal with that face to face. Like you're putting, right? You're putting it off. Well, so okay, listen to this example. I like this because, and we can put it up on the screen because I like what this says. It says, I'm hurt. So they're using an I phrase, right? Okay. Instead of you. I'm hurt and upset by what's happened. I'd like to hear your side of it so that we uh, mm. address the situation together. Mm -hmm. So you're then inviting that person mm -hmm. saying you're open to talking about it. It sounds like it came from HR though. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I said that to my <laughs> husband. He's like, what situation are we addressing? Well, okay, see, I copy then, and paste sure. what I got from the employee handbook. I'm sending this to you. Okay, you know, so you switch it up like. a little bit. You can say, how Please do you do. see this? Yeah, like Brianize it. If how you do you see the stuff you've done? No, that's not. This is all your fault. You have recognized this. Accountability. Um, we're throwing it to the guys.